الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord the gracious, the merciful the master of the earths and the heavens, the king of the day of judgment, Azza wa Jal. And the prayers and the blessings of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And be upon all those who follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa nashhadu anna Muhammadan abdullahi wa rasooluh, wa safiyuhu min khalqihi wa khaliluh. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته وسار على هديه إلى يوم الدين Indeed we bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the messenger of Allah I remind myself and remind you to be pious to remember Allah سبحانه وتعالى in everything that you do to heed the orders of the Almighty Azza wa Jal when he says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadi wa attaqullah inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amalun O who you believe, be God conscious and I in no way accept in the way of Islam O who you believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he knows best what you do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this Jum'ah a blessed one for all of us. To guide our steps, to forgive our sins, and to keep us steadfast on his path. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat, in verse 15, يَقُولُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم في سبيل الله أولئك هم الصادقون الله سبحانه وتعالى in the verse of in the سورة of الحجرات verse 15 describes those who are true in their belief there are four components that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high says. He says, those who believe or the true believers, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Then they don't have a doubt within their hearts for such a belief. وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ Then they have applied the utmost effort that they have with their wealth and with their lives fi sabilillah in a defined cause in a known mission and responsibility sadiqun. now if you look closely to these verses these are verses that came after another verse in which the people of arabia who started flowing into islam they used to say we believe and they think that it's just a matter of declaring and not carrying any responsibility or deeper belief in their iman. You say that you believe, don't say until you truly have faith become alive and ingrained in your hearts. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمْ يَرْتَابُوا you know, the scholars, when they talk about certitude and yaqeen, they always say there are three different steps to yaqeen. عِلْمُ الْيَقِينَ وَعَيْنُ الْيَقِينَ إِيش؟ وَحَقُّ الْيَقِينَ One is to know. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed His message upon us, sent it, preserved. We have received it through the prophets. So we have عِلْمُ الْيَقِينَ we have heard about it. We have known about it. We have the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aynul yaqeen is for you to take it a step further. Not only do you hear about it, but you also see it. 
And we have the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this universe. The creation of the Almighty Azza wa Jal, the signs that are for those who will use their mind and use in, inform their hearts. But then they say you don't get to the next level until you fuse both and you come with what's called Haqqul Yaqeen. Where it's no longer about just believing, it's no longer about just hearing about or knowing about, but rather it's about making it the basis for anything and everything that you do. It's the foundational truth that informs every aspect of your life. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in Surah Al-Baqarah, Alif Lam Mim, Dalik Al-Kitab, Ish, La Rayba Fi. Same use of the word Yartabu. Hudan Lil Muttaqeen. What are their signs? Alladina Yuminuna Bil Ghaibi, Wa Yuqimuna Salata, Wa Mimma Razakna Hom Yum Fikun. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ The certitude that is foundational, that, that despite us not seeing Al-Akhirah, we've heard about it, we've seen the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we've heard our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have believed everything else, why wouldn't we believe the word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high describes for us? Things that we have not seen. And we have yet to see. And so it becomes a belief of certainty. Indeed, they are the ones who are successful. And then, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Because it's a natural product for those who allow faith to take hold of them. And who reach a degree of certitude by learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by learning about his signs, by learning and reading his book, by living the, the legacy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is only natural that that certitude will build. But then that certitude will take you to a higher level where it has to produce results. It has to produce action. And that action is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the field of giving up your wealth and your life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not a conditional effort. It's not a limited effort. It's not يومن, يومن, I mean, a day to Allah and a day without. It's not about half solutions. But rather it's about a total commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجَعَلَّ مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا those who want to be the believers that follow the path of the Prophet وسلم, they have to apply themselves. And then the last part, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ Where? فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا Then we have to learn the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to learn the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon the believers, the one he endowed the prophets with fulfilling and living so that they can show the rest of humanity, and the one that is the pathway through which we attain happiness in this life and absolvance from hellfire in the hereafter. Why do we say this, my dear brothers and sisters? Because the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to learn and come together. Those are the truthful ones. Those are the ones that say what they mean and do what they say. And so when we look around us, my dear brothers and sisters, one of the biggest challenges that I see and we live as all of us, is this sense of gravity and I wouldn't say hopelessness, but overwhelmingness of what happens in the world around us, in our ummah. You know, we have recently engaged the news of the disappearance of our brother Jamal Khashiqji. I for one knew him personally. I took care of his family as a surgeon. I got to know him even closer, not only through the readings of over maybe 25, 30 years, our generation of those who have grown up listening to what he was writing in Jaridat al-Muslimoon or reporting on the news of the Mujahideen in Afghanistan and so on and so forth. 
It was long in the coming, knowing about some voices that talks a little bit about Islam and maybe a balanced view. And he wasn't particularly an Islamic preacher or he wasn't somebody who would advocate the matters of the deen, but rather he was a good man who grew up within the bounds of people who understood Islam in a full manner, in a comprehensive manner. He was taught by a lot of the Ikhwan Muslimin and so on and so forth, teachers that enlightened him, that gave him a meaning in this life. And so he was a man with the mission. He used his pen, he used his intellect to inform. And may have, he may have committed many mistakes along the way, and I'm not here to judge the man. But when we hear his story, it affects us. It hurts us. Because it comes on top of the hundreds of thousands of the unknowns who have been killed and who have been maimed in the very countries we call our own, in the very nations where we were born and raised. And we look at the Rohingyas or we look at our Chinese brothers in China or we look at throughout the world, not forgetting the original calamity of Philistine and Al-Quds and so on and so forth. Many of us can have these constant feelings of despair and hardship. And then we compare it to a reality we live in here in America. And some will feel like we are in a society that is Islamophobic, that there are so many challenges against Muslims, that there are people who don't understand Islam and maybe even people who don't like Islam and hate Islam and want to fight against Muslims and so on and so forth. Forgetting that our Prophet ﷺ lived in very exact circumstances. He lived in a world that was in one tune. The Persians and the Romans and the Arabs have no say in the world. And he lived in difficult times knowing the global picture if he was to become hostage to that reality. And he lived in a society which was very hard for him to accept their norms. And to live within the wrongdoings that were rampant in his society. So he wanted to bring about a transformation. A reformation. One that is enlightened and guided to elevate the human condition. Now the beauty of the example of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high. Chose him to be a prophet for this ummah. In fact chose him to be the last prophet. Khatam al-Nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the message that he encompassed was to be the completed faith. That not only whose book or its book, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preserved in its entirety. Word for word, verse for verse, book, chapter for chapter. But his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the manifestation of that divine guidance. So that he can become the witness upon the rest of mankind. He's done his job, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he declared it high and loud in Mecca, He was ready for what? Allahumma hal ballagh, Allahumma fashhad. Those who are to hear his words, those who will embody his example, those who will call for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرُ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا So the question that I'm raising, my dear brothers and sisters, is in the midst of these calamities, we should never give in to the hopelessness and the difficulties associated with our reality back home, arguably for at least the first generation of immigrants. Nor can we turn a blind eye or lack the ability to transform the very reality we live in. Because at the end of the day, that's where it starts. At the end of the day, not only are you responsible for yourself, but for your family and for your kids and for your neighbors, and for your community, and for your society. And if giving in to these feelings, and feeling helpless, or feeling victim, or, or feeling lost, are not removed by the enlightenment that comes from knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
working very hard to enlighten and, and brighten your day with that knowledge and implementing it. In the four stages I talked about, not only the Iman and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet, but also to make sure that you're confident and steadfast on that path. There's no doubt in the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no doubt in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Tansurullah Yansurkum. There is no doubt in the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He brought enlightenment to all of humanity. He improved on the condition of man, not just the Muslims, but everybody who has engaged or lived with. And a civilization was brought out from the ashes of the backwardness that he lived in and from the sorry condition of the world he was in because he focused on that message he figured out on his own reality by understanding it and by reaching out and by engaging and by getting involved how he can transform the very lives of the people around him how can he have this beautiful combination the godly combination from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that until and unless we scratch the surface of our iman and we move away from the superficial understanding of our deen as just a set of rituals that we're supposed to implement. Ibadah has its place and it's integral to the tazkiyah and to the improvement of the human being. But it's not limited to just that if you think of it in its limited manner. Unless you understand ibadah in its broad sense. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Truly, yes. It includes everything else. But if we limit it to just our visit to the masjid or our iqama of the salawat, which are absolutely essential, as I said, and it's no, and not in, in any way putting them as less, but rather they're part of a bigger picture. They're part of a bigger plan. When you look at the al-haram wal halal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delineates al-haram in very specific examples. So yes, we're supposed to know them, but we're not supposed to stop there. We're not supposed to go around and tell people, this is haram, this is haram. But rather, we're supposed to be engaging and figuring out how do we use the tools of al-halal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided us so that we can fulfill the very responsibilities of this deen. This deen is came on basis of maqasid, on the basis of ensuring that we bring about a transformation in the lives of ourselves and in the lives of others. Islahun wa i'mar. That you were supposed to cultivate the human potential in order for us to make sure that that human being lives the most decent life, honored by the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, informed in his behavior and in his morals by the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endowed us with, and we see exemplified in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam empowered by the basics of ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you, the tools by which you nurture your spirit so that you can carry on your body to implement that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires of us. So we actually flip the picture. Instead of looking at our ibadat as the end of what we do, we look, them, look at them as the beginning of what we do. Instead of looking at learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an end in and of itself, it becomes the very reason why we wake up every morning so that we can be good to others and so that we can stand the struggle of ensuring that the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is heard. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too well to be sitting doing nothing about honoring his, his obligations. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too well not to love and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek every path we know how to ensure that he is meeting us with his pleasure subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter. We know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam too well to leave it as stories that we tell our, tell our children but rather we look at it as a guideline for us every single day. What would I do or what would the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do in that very occasion, in the very test, in the very incident that I am dealing with. I want to know about him. I want to know about his genius. I want to know about his character. I want to know how he would he navigate America in the 21st century if he was here, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And we start doing our ibadat not just because it's an obligation that we have to do. Because my, my father tells me so or because I need to do it because it's required. But rather we become like Umar radiallahu anhu who would spend all of his day for the sake of serving people. And then when he come at night, he says, I need the energy. I need the power to be able to withstand the pressures of dealing with people all day. So he said, I give the day to the people, but I give the night to Allah because I need Allah. Then our ibadah becomes one that we taste, one that we live for, one that we yearn for the day when we miss our word of Quran or the day when we miss Salatul Jama'ah or the day we, la qadr Allah, we miss our prayers. is a day that should never be repeated. Look at the example of the companions who have been endowed with this knowledge because they understood Islam correctly. They went beyond the superficial understanding of Al-A'rab. They realized it's a life mission. It's something that should empower them to transform their lives, that their lives are made in order for them to fulfill the very obligation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon humanity. Because at the end of the day, it's just a mere hours and days and weeks and maybe years. And then it is meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being held accountable for what you do. Al-yawma amalun wala hisab wa ghadan hisabun wala amal. That's where the yaqeen comes. Rabbil akhirati hum yuqinun. That's where that belief becomes the very power that enlightens us and enables us to move forward, my dear brothers and sisters. And so when we look at what do we do and how we can do it, it becomes very straightforward. It becomes a matter of obligation and commitment. It becomes a matter of using what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Mind, intellect, spirit, heart, morals, all. To figure out how do we work together? How do we move forward? How do we solve problems? How do we improve on the condition of man? How do we save our children? How do we make them empowered to be in the best place possible to be the leaders of their own society? The ones that transform the conditions that we live in to better conditions. To embrace those who are doing good and ensuring that we do greater good through this divine guidance. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten our hearts, to keep our feet steadfast, to forgive our sins, and to give us that best in this, in this life and the hereafter. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه غفور رحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه الصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته وسار على هديه إلى يوم الدين. My dear brothers and sisters, the day when we look at what happens in the world and mourn and feel sad are gone. We can feel sad because we're human beings. We can feel sad because we feel the calamity and the heartache. If one part of a body aches, every part of the body aches. But we can never allow that to cloud our ability and our judgment to think about what is it that we can do. And when we look at the difficulties or the challenges that are facing us here in America, because our playing field is America, my dear brothers and sisters. If you have the, the plans and, and, the, and the ideas that you can do some good somewhere else in the world, by Allah, do the best you can. But if you're here, your children are born here, your society is here, the playing fields are here, we need to figure out how best we can bring about that enlightenment of the divine guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this reality. So enough time feeling insular, feeling helpless, feeling unable to do. But rather, it needs to be an alignment of that faith of ours and a willingness to carry on the mission like he did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أن تسعى جاهدا لتكون كما يريدك الله سبحانه وتعالى. وأن تسعى جاهدا لتفعل ما يريده الله سبحانه وتعالى. You want to work as hard as you can to be the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be. In your ibadah, in your ta'a, in your iman. And you want to work very hard to make sure you do which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks of you. 
Not the half-hearted ibadah, not the half-hearted, you know, I do a little bit to feel good or to do what, you know, what I think is okay. And then spend the majority of my time doing that which has nothing to do with fulfilling the responsibilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed upon us. In doing that, my dear brothers and sisters, we will become not only aware of our own reality, not only aware of the fact that there is a world that exists outside of this masjid, that we are part of it, that we're responsible for its well-being just as much as everybody else, and that we need to prepare ourselves to work very hard to figure out not only the ABCs of how to navigate, but also how we can become an original contributor to the well-being of the society. If we deem that there are problems that are rampant in our society, then it is incumbent upon us to dig in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to look at the genius of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the divine guidance he endowed and lived and lived by, and how did he brought about the solutions and the venues and avenues to do it. I want to remind you that next weekend, your brothers and sisters in CARE, Council of American Islamic Relations, one of the organizations, alhamdulillah, that are premier and that are doing their best to translate that faith into action. And we have many other organizations that are doing great work, but I'm pointing out this because it exemplifies the very efforts we're talking about. They're bringing about leaders from across the country. They have their annual banquet on Saturday, the 20th. But the, days to the day before, Friday and Saturday, they have a full day of engagement of leaders and policy makers from the Muslim community, bringing in, mashallah, good teachers and scholars and, 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 and speakers to try to fuse these meanings together to allow and help them to, inshallah, define the tools by which we can make a change, make a difference in our community. Same way your brothers and sisters in the masjid here are inviting those who we will behold responsible and accountable for the well-being of the, all of the society. doesn't matter Democrats or Republicans. These are people that soon enough we should have people from here, from this community, doing the same thing, running for the same offices, guiding the same policies and ways and means. And so anybody who is in that position has to be held responsible for the service of the people he represents. And so, like as I said, if your heartache and if your confusion and if your overwhelmingness is taking over, you need to brush it aside. You need to wake up to a new day inspired by the faith and the deen that you believe in, doing that obligation which is required of us. It is from the depth of the sajda that we make in salah is the same way that we see a man like Brother Jamal Khashiqji die when he was called, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, Sayyidu Shuhada, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, wa rajulun qama ila imamun jair, fa amarahu wa naha, faqatala, nahsabu inda Allahi shaheed. Wa nadu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lahu salama in kana ghayra thalik. For the way we embrace this, my dear brothers and sisters, is no compromise, but rather a full commitment. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and keep us steadfast. Remember, inshallah, to attend the National Leadership and the Policy Conference on Friday the 19th and Saturday the 20th, followed by the banquet as well. Allahumma afu anna wa gfir lana wa rhamna. Anta maulana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaaha. Wa zakkiha maulaya. Anta khayru man zakkaaha. Anta waliyuha wa maulaha. Ibad Allah. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة